Welcome back to another Astro 310 video. Today's video, we will be discussing the precursor material that we will need to both derive and solve the restricted two-body equation of motion in class. We have two objectives with this video. The first is by the end, you should be able to sketch the geometry of an elliptical orbit and to recognize its defining parameters. And second, you're going to be able to define the constants of orbital motion, namely specific mechanical energy and uh, specific angular momentum, and to know what each of these imply about our orbit. So to begin with, let's look at an elliptical orbit of a satellite around the Earth. An ellipse has two foci, and at one of these foci, you will find the Earth, or uh, the orbited body. And at the other, is simply going to be empty. You can also define some um, orbital terms here. Perigee is going to be the point on the orbit which is closest to the Earth. And apogee is going to be the point on the orbit that's farthest away from the Earth. Um, our ellipse has two axes here. Well, um, our major axis is the long axis, and that's going to be defined as 2a. We do that so that we can define our semi-major axis, or half of the major axis, as simply a. The minor axis is going to be equal to 2b. We can also define the distance between our foci as 2c. If we look at the ratio between c and a, we can derive and, and define our eccentricity, which is going to be essentially how elliptical our orbit actually is. We can also look at several other distances, and that is the distance from the center of the Earth to apogee we are going to refer to as r subscript a. And the distance from the center of the Earth to perigee is going to be r subscript p, so r a and r p. And we can relate those to our major axis using the following equations. So our semi-major axis is going to be equal to rp plus ra divided by 2, wherein the distance between rp and ra um, is simply our major axis. We can also define rp and ra in terms of semi-major axis and eccentricity, and those equations are shown here. rp is equal to a times the quantity 1 minus e, and ra is equal to a times the quantity 1 plus e. We can look at some more geometry here. Um, if we define the vector pointing from the center of the Earth up to our satellite's position as our r vector, we can actually look at an angle between the point of perigee, or really the uh, vector that's pointing out towards perigee, and our r vector, and we define that as our true anomaly, or nu. And that's going to be in the direction of spacecraft motion. We can, we can also define our satellite's velocity vector as the quantity v, v vector. And that's going to be tangent to our orbital path. All right, let's look at these constants. So we have two constants, specific mechanical energy and specific angular mo momentum. Let's talk about mechanical energy first. So from the last video, you may recall that mechanical energy is going to be conserved. And this is going to be the relationship between kinetic and potential energy. So here you see energy is equal to our kinetic term minus our potential term. Because it's conserved, these things will need to be, uh, this energy value will remain equal for our entire orbit. So what we do, um, so instead of having to take uh, into account this mass of our satellite the entire time, is we divide that out, and that's where we get the specific mechanical energy from. So specific mechanical energy is defined as epsilon is equal to v squared over 2 minus mu over r. And what this implies about our orbit is that our orbital velocity will not be constant because we're trading this potential and kinetic energy. The only time that this will not be the case, where we will have a constant velocity, will be in the case of a circular orbit. So let's talk about our specific angular momentum and what the implications are for that being constant for our orbit. So angular momentum is defined as h equals r cross mv. If we divide out in a similar fashion the mass of our satellite, we end up with specific angular momentum, and that is little h vector is equal to the r vector cross the v vector. And what you might recall from crossing vectors is that when you cross uh, two vectors, you end up with a third vector that is both um, perpendicular or orthogonal to both of the uh, subsequent vectors that went into that. So in this case, our r vector and our v vector both lie in the orbital plane. So our h vector will be orthogonal to that plane. Um, and so it will actually define our orbital plane. And notably, this um, orbital plane is going to be constant um, unless it's going to be perturbed by an outside force, which will come into play uh, when we start talking about the implications of the restricted two-body equation of motion later, uh, but can perhaps best be illustrated with just thinking about our Earth. So our Earth is spinning on its axis, 
because it's spinning, it has angular momentum, and because angular momentum is conserved, it remains in the same orientation or same position as it orbits around the sun. And the net effect of this uh, for us here on Earth is that we end up with seasons. We're in, in the northern hemisphere at times, we'll be closer to the sun, that's summertime, and then at other times we'll be further away and that ends up uh, being wintertime. So hopefully you've uh, learned a couple things about um, our uh, restricted two-body equation of motion and the things that are going to go into that uh, from today's video. And by the end, I'm hoping now that you'll be able to sketch the geometry of an of elliptical orbit and to be able to define those constants.